Hello and welcome to this lens tutorial from Canon. I'm Rob Crow. And I'm Jenny Hare. And in this tutorial we're going to be talking about landscape photography. Now, what happens when we really try and capture a vista? We can't just point a camera at the landscape and click, that's not enough. Really what we're thinking about is what we're experiencing. We're taking cues from all kinds of things like the sights we're seeing, but also the sounds, the smells. What we're trying to do is make an emotional connection with our viewer. And that's quite a tall order. But if we think to ourselves, well, what are our images really about? Then it makes the other decisions that we have to make in this process a lot easier. One of the first things we're going to have to consider is obviously composition. Landscape photography is all about composition. What do we include? What do we exclude? And how do we do it? If we move, what happens to the perspective? And what about the relevant scales of things in a landscape? Do we want that little tree dwarfed against a looming mountain? Or will we like the tree to tower over some distant hills? So thinking about position, very important. And that's going to influence our lens choice. The next thing we really need to think about is light. Obviously, light's critical to all photography. But in landscape, it really is part of what we're photographing. Landscape photographers aren't just thinking about the scene in front of them. They're thinking about the time of day, where the light's coming from, where the sun's going to be at 5 o'clock as it starts to dip. They might even have a compass. An alarm clock's very useful to a landscape photographer for those reasons. A good landscape feels like we could almost step into it. It's like being there, a three-dimensional experience. And the way we can capture good detail is to think about the types of lens we use. How good is the glass? Is it really resolving at its optimal? So you need to pick a lens for landscape. Where do you start? Well, I don't think there's much better place than with this 24mm L-series lens from Canon. It's a lovely lens, L-series, which means it's using all the best construction and glass. And it also makes use of an amazing technology called sub-wavelength structure coating. What that means is that the light, as it enters the lens, the interface between the air and the glass is broken down. And this technology is actually modelled off the surface of a moth's eye. And it means to us that we're really reducing reflection, glare, we're getting all that light, all that subtlety into our image, which is obviously what's important to the photographer. If that's a little bit pricey and you're looking for something more affordable, maybe more flexible, particularly if you're shooting on an APS-C camera like this 60D or like the 7D, then this 10 to 22 millimeter short zoom, really flexible lens gives us the equivalent of 16 to 35 millimeter focal length. If we really want to go for super wide and we're looking to capture an entire vista, you can't do much better than this. It's a 14 millimeter lens. Again, L series we can see from the red stripe. Lovely glass. It's going to capture all that detail, all the subtlety of light that we're trying to capture, and very wide. There's another type of lens that Canon make a tilt-shift lens. So usually when we photograph, we think of our focus running off in front of us. With a tilt-shift lens, we're able to alter the angle of that. So if we are working with narrow depths of field, we can actually create strange illusions of the focus falling into a different plane. And that can be used to create things like a toy town effect, where things look miniature. Perhaps more importantly for landscape photographers, particularly urban landscape photography, the shift function on this is really also very useful because when we tilt a lens, that's when we get distortion. But by being able to shift the lens, the focal plane of the lens, it means it's a little bit like we're shooting from higher up and we can keep the back of the camera flat, which keeps our buildings and objects undistorted. OK, enough talking about the lenses. Let's see what they can really do. So, Jenny, what have you got on the screen? I've got a few great examples of these lenses, actually, as far as landscapes go. This is on the 14mm, the fixed lens, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful example here. You've got all the differences in light, and you've got the focus going all the way through the image, almost right to the back where the mountains are. Sure, lovely, yeah, in the sky. This is on the same lens again. It just shows you how you can really bring in your foreground as well mm -hmm. on the side there and still have that great vista. It's got a lovely sweep of the land that draws the eye around it again about composition. But also one of the things that I know of interest in this shot is we're often told not to shoot directly into the sun. But look, there's only a little kick off the sun. We're not getting all that flare and glare that can destroy the contrast in an image. And that's because it's a really good quality lens. So this image is shot on the 24, which is also the fixed lens. It's an interesting perspective, isn't it, when you're that close and, and still filling the frame like that. Yeah. There's also a lovely kind of energy to this, I think, that works, because we don't want image blur necessarily, but we've got all the sharp detail of the silhouettes of the characters, but we've still got a feeling of movement from the sweep. Very nice. I like the little moon detail in the corner there. And even in the low light, again, you've got so much movement going on, but it's, quite, it's captured quite well on this lens, quite sharp. And then moving on to the tilt shift, because mm -hmm. I've got two images that really show what it does in an right. urban landscape. We're going to do so it before and after. We are, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
this is kind of your standard shot looking up at a building. You'd expect your lines to kind of go to infinity. Right, so these are the converging verticals Vertical. that we talked about, yes, yeah, when you tilt the lens up at a building, yeah. Now on your tilt shift, you have the option of straightening out your verticals. Right, right. So, so this is shot from the same camera position, yeah. just using the lens to correct. I mean, I think this is quite an interesting point because sometimes we kind of expect naturally perspective to disappear off and converge, don't we? And if we overdo it, things can look like they're going the other way. But with the tilt shift lens, you have very fine control so we can, we can tweak these towers to our heart's content we can redesign Venice, Florence. <laughs> this is with the 800 mil, which obviously is a lot longer than what we've been looking at. Here's an example of someone standing a long way away with a long lens, and it's had that effect of foreshortening the perspective, because when we stand at a great distance, perspective in the distance is flatter. And I think it's worked really well. It, it renders the mountain almost like on a flat surface, like a painting. Yeah. Really caught the light well. But also what I like about it is the photographers had to work for this image, and this is one of the things we were talking about getting up early, catching the light, taking maybe a quite heavy bit of kit to the right position and really planning ahead. It's really contributed to a great image. Yeah. Thanks, Jenny. So we've looked at a lot of things today and hopefully you've been inspired to think of ways that you might want to improve your landscape photography. One of the first things you can do is to pick up a different lens and try it and see where it takes you. So go out there, try another lens and be inspired.